There's a big week in the wrestling world this week. On a lighter note, on a lighter note, on a more serious note, the exact opposite of a lighter note, actually, a much more darker note. We lost the WWE Hall of Famer, the beloved Scott Hall, a.k.a. Razor Ramon, former multi-time Intercontinental Champion. Haven't spoken too much about this since Monday, Mr. Marceau, but this really kind of came together instantly. I mean, I think he was hospitalized for something separate, um, hip surgery, something along those lines. Um, had a blood clot go loose. Three heart attacks suffered on Sunday, taken off life support by Monday night. Uh, super sad stuff. I had the chance to meet him a few times. He wasn't on your flight coming back from Mania 30, right? He Kevin Nash no, was? No. Was that Kevin Nash? Kevin Nash was. And you ran into Godfather. And we ran into Godfather on Bourbon. On Bourbon Street. On Bourbon Street. But you were, the, you didn't go to the Hall of Fame, but that was the weekend that he was inducted into the Hall of Fame, right? Yeah. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. And I was there the weekend that he was inducted into the Hall of Fame as part of the NWO just last year. But, uh, Crazy stuff, Mr. Marson. I think before we get into anything, or maybe we'll save the impression for save last. Save the impression for last. Save the impression for last. I don't want to go on a lighter note and then go back into the, the fact that he passed away. But thoughts on the abrupt passing of Scott Hall and the impact he leaves behind on the pro wrestling world. Yeah, definitely sad. I mean, I'm not that I thought this was going to happen sooner, but after that ESPN documentary they had of him, it seemed like everyone in his family basically were saying, like, we think Scott's going to be dead soon, so... Did they say that on that? I mean, they're like, he was, di- he was like, basically dying at that point. I mean, he was in a pretty rough pretty bad, spot. Bad that was spot. pre-DDP. That was pre-DDP, exactly. Yeah. So, he was... The drug drug stuff, all that stuff was going bad, but... I mean, it seemed like he got his life together a little bit. I mean, unfortunately, it looks like he might have broken his hip recently. Yeah. Went in for surgery, and that's kind of what did it, but I think just the years of abuse, definitely... I mean, he was, was he 63? He looked a lot older than that. <laughs> yeah, so. but especially in the Hall of Fame induction last year. I remember you texted me, like, yeah, he's looking a little rough. But, um, yeah, no, still, I mean, way too soon to be losing him. But you mentioned the documentary. The ESPN one was uh, was great. I think that was an E60, wasn't it? Or something it, like it that. It was an E60, yeah. They did an E60 on him. They did an E60 on Ric Flair as well. Did you see the WWE one on Razor? It's on, it was on the network. I thought you watched it. I <laughs> think so i don't remember though I how go long ago did it come out about four or five years it ago. probably did at the time but okay. i don't remember i was gonna say um yeah that was that's probably a much less toned down version yeah as far as, the e61's as as like deep the e61's deep <laughs> they do a deep dive on a lot of the shit that he was involved in he yeah. had a very illustrious life um you know they, they talked about it in the video package they put up for him during raw on monday um the nwo stuff obviously kicking off that whole era in the Attitude Era for WWE and WCW. The ladder match with Shawn Michaels, WrestleMania 10, one of the best ladder matches of all time. Him and Shawn Michaels for the Intercontinental Championship. Um, many other matches and moments he's been a part of along the way. Uh, would you say sitting here right now off the top of your head that Scott Hall slash Razor Ramon, and this has been a great discussion over the last couple of days on Twitter from what I've seen, one of the best wrestlers to have never won a world championship in WWE? He's up there. I mean, definitely. I mean... The fact that he never won the WWE Championship is crazy. I mean, he also did leave. I mean, if I feel like if he stayed um, stayed before he went to WCW, I think he could have got there. You think so? I mean, the Razor stuff was getting was going. I mean, Tony D'Angelo could learn a thing or two. <laughs> that's, I mean, yeah, that's good, yeah. Took the par and ran with it and made it into, I mean, basically it was Scott Hall. I mean, it was basically himself. So, I think in that aspect, I mean, I think if he stayed longer, he probably would have won the belt. Somewhere down the line. I mean, Psycho Sid came back and won the belt, so... I think if Razor stayed, I think he could have. Just going to WCW, and then when he came back, the whole NWO stuff, and then he got released pretty soon after that. And then I don't think we saw him wrestle again after that early 2000s run. So Yeah, after the uh, plane ride from hell. Exactly. <laughs> Did he? I, I think he, well, not in WWE. He definitely wrestled a few, a couple of matches in TNA that were pretty bad. Uh, when Hogan took over, he was there with Nash. They had the band. That's what they called They called yeah, the him ba- the band. Yeah, him and Six Pack. <laughs> that, that was pretty bad. Yeah. Um, then I think he no-show, then they fired him soon after. But yeah, during that original run with WWE, I think, you know, I, you know what's actually funny? was No. Yeah, 20 years ago today. WrestleMania. WrestleMania, 18, mm-hmm. faced Stone Cold Steve Austin. Took the stunner. Took the stunner, one of the greatest sell jobs of all time. Good one. 20 years ago today. Wow, that's crazy. And that's the one of the greatest main events. That, not, it wasn't the main event, but Hogan and Rock. Yep. Incredible match, but... So who else would you put in that conversation as far as, because I saw people say, what's the Mount Rushmore of greatest wrestlers in WWE? Because some of these people won titles in other promotions, like NWA, WCW, whatever. Four people that come to mind off the top of your head that you would say were the greatest wrestlers in WWE. Putting you on the spot. We need to prep oh, for none say, of this. Jesus Christ. <laughs> to have never won the WWE or World Championship that come to mind. Jesus Christ. Kid. I'll, I'll give you mine, then let's see if you Give me yours, so then I can... Because I was thinking about this earlier and yesterday. Scott Hall, in no particular order, Scott Hall slash Razor Ramon, 
Roddy Piper, um, Ted DiBiase, the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase, and I'm tempted to either say Jake Roberts. He never won a single championship, so I mean that's just weird to me. Jake Roberts, or I mean, my selfish pick is William Regal, but that's a different story. So that's my own biased pick. But from any of those, would you agree with and say, yeah? I mean, again, yeah, these are I mean, all from like the 80s. They're, they're too. all older guys, yeah, so it would make sense. I mean, I can't really think of anyone off the top of my head I could even list. I feel like in recent years, anyone that you were like, oh, that really should have won a world championship. They won one. Yeah, I mean, they have like 10 world titles. <laughs> <laughs> the only person that comes to mind is Cesaro from recent years, but I would put all those other people before him, though. Yeah, I would put all those old times before him. I, like I said, I was, I was just like RVD, but he didn't win the WWE Championship. <laughs> Everyone got a world title. Everyone at that point did. Edge, Matt Hardy. Matt Hardy never won the... WWE or World Heavyweight? I mean... I wouldn't count easy. Yeah, I'm not counting easy, but I still want to put him up there with those other nah, guys. But yeah, I think those other guys, Scott Hall, said Scott Hall, Roddy Piper, Jake Snake, and... Ted DiBiase. Ted DiBiase, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's a good list. I think it's a good list. Hey, I come up with a good list. That's what I do. Um, so as we wind down this Scott Hall portion of the show here, got to give it to me, Mr. Moore. So the Razor Ramon impression. You've been doing this for years, as long as I've, I've known you. This is my favorite impersonation. He's been doing this impression for so long, Alexis, that Molly actually hates him for it, because he would do it so often. Is that correct? <laughs> that Can you is true. That for me? That okay. is true. I gotta hear this. So he sent me a quick preview the other day. I sent it to you last night. He sent it to me in the audio message last night. It's excellent. And where did you get this from? Just watching it's the It's from a vignette YouTube? that he it did. It is from the vignette, yeah. but I'm curious, like, you weren't watching them back then. Like, that's the thing. Uh, it's I, just must from have come a vignette that I saw. Somewhere. Give it to me. The Razor Ramon, Mr. Marceau impersonation. Say hello to Razor Ramon, el jefe. <laughs> was there anything else that or was it just that? It's just at the end of a vignette, he's in a car the and he says guy. that. In the, yeah. in the back of the Cadillac. Did you flick the toothpick? I don't remember, but it's at the end, he's in the car. Yes, yeah, so and then he drives him. away. Right, yeah. Right, yeah. Say hello to the bad guy. Oh, I don't know. I'm, I'm rolling the R's a little too much, but... You the bit, always do that. That's not his actual accent though that's the thing he fucking nailed that accent from watching um scarface scarface yeah it's a great job with it so rest in peace razor ramon aka scott hall he will be missed 